A lot of you boys and girls wanted to know what cirrhotic arthritis is all about, what it is. It's basically an autoimmune disease. It's Monday and in um, this Friday I head off to Australia. The wind outside is, it's mad. We're still, there's still hurricane fucking Dennis squirting his load everywhere. I mean, it's horrible outside, horrible. I'm looking forward to going away. I'm looking forward to going away because I'm tired. I'm tired, I really am tired. When there's something that's not right with you, physically or mentally, and you're not able to deal with it. I think it's imperative that you, you seek help. Find someone who's uh, been around the block, who's wise in the ways of the body, and listen to what they have to say. Whether it's good or bad, just listen. You don't necessarily have to accept their diagnosis, particularly doctors. Yes, they are very well knowledgeable. But always ask for a referral. A referral to a specialist who is trained and is more proficient than a doctor would be in that particular area of expertise. I remember going to... I was working in PC World at the time. I was working as a senior technician. And one of the days I ended up at the, the counter, the customer service desk. And this lady came up to me and she was talking away to me and, you know, she was probably in her early 60s, mid 60s. She said to me, she goes, oh, um, I know it's your fingers. She goes, have you got arthritis? I said, I do, yeah. <laughs> That's what I think I do. <laughs> I got diagnosed with gout. And uh, the doctor just thought it was too much purines from red meat and maybe possibly alcohol. Uric acid and build up and crystals and pain and joint pain and all that. But as it turned out, it wasn't. It was rheumatoid arthritis, cirrhotic arthritis, not rheumatoid arthritis. I did actually get tested for arthritis and there is no blood markers in the blood for cirrhotic arthritis. However, they put me on a, a drug called methotrexate, which is a tiny little white tablet. And methotrexate uh, can affect the liver, the kidneys, and the whole body. And it also affects your sperm. So if you wanted to have kids, there's chances that the kids could have some uh, blah, blah, blah. The kids could have some abnormality. You can hear the wind whistling in the background, or oh, it's my foreground. You want to take a look? I'll show you. That's it. Spin this around. Let's just have a little looksy do. Actually, I don't even need it. I can just press the button, I suppose. Can I? No, it won't let me. Fuck it. It's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. It's easy to become sad. It's easy to become depressed. And the reason it's easy is because whatever you focus on, whatever your attentions are on, the rest of your body will follow suit. If I sit with a posture that's leaning over and looking down, well then I'll start to feel exactly that way. It's very difficult to be depressed if you're running around and doing jumping jacks. In fact, if you were depressed or feel like you are depressed, if you throw in some exercise into the mix, it's gonna change in an instant how you feel about what's going on. It may not relieve any pain, it may not make you feel happy, but it'll change your outlook on what's happening. You know, a few minutes ago, at the gate there, there was a cop car. And I just saw this yellow stripe, and I'm like, oh shit, what did I do? 
that's horrible. That's that's horrible fear to live in. That they would have so much control over what I perceive them to be. It's like intimidating. Sitting outside the house. What the hell do they want? What the fuck do you want? He is pigs. He is fucking shower of bastards. Park outside someone else's house. Is what I could say to them. What the fuck are you doing? It's a fucking private estate now. Fuck off. But I didn't. Instead I sat there with my tea going. I wonder what they want. I hope they're not coming in here. And then I noticed they fucking coming out of the neighbor's house. And I thought well okay well they're. Older style neighbours, there's no fucking dramas there, and I thought, okay, maybe there's gonna be burglaries. I'm thinking, okay, fucking burglaries, here we go. And then my mind started to race, and then they moved on and they slowed down by the gate. I'm like, oh god, they're coming in here after all, it's nothing to do with burglaries, I'm fucked. And what am I fucked for? I didn't do anything. But what if there is burglaries? There are a shitload of equipment here. So, what is it that's gonna make me ultimately happy? Money? No. New house. No. New people in my life. No. I mean, I'm happy just looking out the fucking window. Sometimes I see a squirrel. Hopping along. So it was 4 o'clock last night, 4 a.m. The window is ajar because um, I need to get some air because only one nostril seems to be working. And that's a story about Gardy, I can tell you. And yet a reason that I can only breathe from one nostril. So 4 o'clock anyway, and I hear this scream, cats screaming, I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. So I hop out of bed, it wasn't just a single scream, they were like fucking going out of these cats. Went outside, turned the light on and couldn't see anything. Opened the door, got the bleeding headlight, fucking bang joke. Seen a couple of bleeding eyeballs staring back at me, I'm like, oh, okay. Went back to bed. Then another half an hour. Just fuck this. Weather was the same as it is now. Cold. Very, very windy. So I put the... I put the um, headband on and coat on. I went to walking up the back garden to eventually one of the two cats legged it off and then the other cat legged it off. And I knew the cats, not by name, <laughs> clearly not by name, they're not my cats, and I don't think they're even neighbours cats, but they're two male cats, and each individual one is very nice, but you can't get near them, because they're feral, or whatever, whatever it is, I think that's all, you can see them tired. I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.